Good afternoon, Harris. How are you doing? Hello, Martin. Excellent. Excellent as always. You? All fine? Wonderful. Yep. Yeah, good to catch up again. Uh, yes, sure. I missed you. Yeah, I missed you too. Surprising. It's very nice to hear. <laughs> so, anyway, Harris, something's been crossing my mind. What does it mean, lube expert? And particularly when I see it like on your shirt, the SDT lube expert. Yeah, well, actually, it's a two questions. It should be two questions because there are two answers. Who is lube expert and what is lube expert? That's okay, let's start with the first one because I kind of like to think of myself as a lube expert. In fact, I think I might even have that on my LinkedIn profile as you know. You are, you are definitely. The title. Uh, uh, of course, we can all lie on our LinkedIn uh, CV, but the fact is, is that you know, being sensible, lube expert is a guy who's earned his colours, got the T-shirt the hard way. He's spent a number of years doing lubrication and he's probably even, you know, certified through one of the certifying bodies. Uh, that's what I think of as a lube expert. What do you see it as? Well, uh, I, I, will, I will not speak about certifications. I will go rather, rather more general. Uh, the lube expert is a competent and capable person authorized to do the job he cares about. So when I say competent and capable, I, I, we consider a person who knows what needs to be done, knows how to do it, and he has all necessary means to do it. By authorized, we mean the person that actually is in position to do it, and is of course expected to do it. And by cares about part, that's the most tricky part, we mean the person that actually wants to do it out of his or her beliefs, not, not because he must do it. So just to be clear, that happens on all levels, top and bottom, the same. And that's, that's the reason why you have a grease guy and Mr. Grease guy. So clearly then, it's about the five rights. The right lubricant in the right quantity at the right time, at the right place, with the right attitude. And of course, the right attitude is very much down to the person, the right person, if you like, doing the right job for the right reasons. Um, but isn't it more than just one person? Isn't it a team sometimes? There's not just a particular person alone that's going to be responsible for all that? Exactly, absolutely agree with you. As, as, as we say, it takes a village to raise a child. Equally, it's, it takes organizational culture. It takes entire organizational the organization to raise an expert and keep him there. So agree, it's, yes. it's much more than one person always. Yeah, absolutely. So the second part of the question then specifically, what is Lube Expert? Well, Lube Expert is a condition-based lubrication strategy, which is enabling just anyone to become a person that we just mentioned a second before. So it resolves the problems we mentioned before in, in previous episodes and creates all new environment. Because it's not only hardware and software, it's a culture, discipline, education, technology, evaluation, correction, and at the end of the day, recognition. So in this case, technology is a game changer because it helps all this other stuff to happen. That sounds pretty reasonable because obviously, you know, time-based maintenance planning is great, but often things get skipped, things get missed. But also, it, you might consider it guesswork, I suppose. And I've always been a big advocate of condition-based and particularly in terms of lubrication tasks. So something that we could do there, condition-based, um, you know, it's very clear what your target is there that you know, let's improve lubrication practice to perfection in a way that the company benefits, whether it's financially or whether it's with the health and safety record or whether it's environmentally speaking in terms of the carbon footprint, etc. Um, but surely, you know, how do we go about getting there with, you know, we, we can't drive this upwards through an organization, can we? No, in my, in our opinion, and I'm sure you agree with that, the first step is always a decision. So there must be a clear decision coming from upstairs, coming from the management. So <clears throat> that means understanding current condition and understanding desired condition. So this is where we are, this is where we want to go. Decision means uh, not just declaratively, yeah, let's do it. It's a, yeah. it's a readiness to support changes. People don't so, like changes very much, very often. No. Uh, so it's got to be more than just paying lip service to it. We've got to actually provide the tools, etc to get that right. So where do you think, I mean, obviously this is something we could talk over over a number of ice creams, you know how fond we yeah. are of those, uh, but it's a pretty big subject. So, you know, obviously we have to get back to that at some point to discuss that, but um, your thoughts. 
So uh, uh, yes, we can come 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 back back to that that, that again. But once the decision is made that uh, 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 we need to buy a software and hardware, okay, that's that's something that's something we start with. And usually, it's not about about huge investment. I always see a huge investment in change. That's a huge investment. Everything else is not not such a big investment. 